Welcome, welcome to another episode of Edible Rx. I'm Laura Rodriguez, holistic chef, autoimmune warrior, and backyard farmer, and this is the podcast that teaches you to use anti-inflammatory comfort food as medicine. In today's podcast, I'm going to be sharing with you five ways that you can make cooking at home easier so you can do it long enough to notice a difference in your health. All right. Oh my gosh, guys. It has been a minute since I got to sit down and record a podcast for you. I feel like November 3rd until now with the thanks or the Friendsgiving picnic pop-up and all of the holiday Christmas parties I had to cater and all of my normal weekly private holistic chef sessions. It was just like the last couple months just completely flew by in the blink of an eye. I cannot believe it's time to take down the Christmas decorations and start planning the spring garden already. Like what? <laughs> so welcome back guys. Anyway, um, today I wanted to share with you tips to help you make your life easier, to help make cooking easier so that you can actually use food as medicine on a daily basis for a long enough time to notice a difference. Cause that's when the real change happens. That's when the real um, lifestyle change happens when you really start to commit to eating this way, eating anti-inflammatory for the rest of your life. Because if you're an autoimmune warrior or you have another chronic condition that's linked to inflammation, yes, it, it might take you a few months to um, lessen your symptoms with um, by using food and eating differently. But the minute you go back to your old ways of eating the standard American diet is the minute your health will start to diminish. I know because it happened to me. So this is a lifestyle change. This is something you're going to have to commit to forever if you want to be able to live a long, healthy, vibrant, pain-free life, flare-free life. So, you know, it takes a lot of prepping and cooking and cleaning and taking out the trash and <laughs> go into the grocery store and all that in order to use food as medicine three times a day, every day. I know it's exhausting for me. Um, and I know how exhausting it is for you. So the five tips I have for you start with ordering your groceries. Yeah. Going to the grocery store is great because you get to pick out the perfect apple and the perfect tomato, yada, yada, yada. But have you ever experienced ordering gr your groceries while you're having your morning tea um, and have them come to your door in a couple hours and you now still have the energy to actually cook? Because <laughs> we've all been there, right? Where we go to the grocery, it takes 30 minutes to get to the store, um, then an hour to shop, and then 30 minutes to get back. And then you got to unload all the groceries, put them all away. And now you're too tired to cook and you order a pizza, right? Like I've been there. Okay. Um, this takes all of that away for, 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 for you. If you have a set of recipes that you're going to follow, print the recipes out and just have them with your phone and just order your groceries. It could be on Instacart or shipped Walmart plus, um, there's Amazon fresh, there's whole foods, um, imperfect foods. There's so many different apps and um, websites nowadays that you can use to order your groceries. And that is going to save you loads and loads of time and energy so that you can use that time and energy towards actually cooking. Okay. So number two, buy pre-chopped vegetables or frozen vegetables, you know, go to that produce, I'm sorry, that convenience section of your produce aisle, like kind of where the, um, the herbs and the lettuces are, you'll find pre-chopped carrots, pre-chopped celery, diced onion, there's zucchini, they, they have, you know, fajita veg, they have um, stew vegetables. If you go to Whole Foods, you'll see packets of like pre-trimmed green beans, um, broccoli florets, baby carrots that are already peeled. Like there's so many things nowadays, depending on your grocery store. Um, and so if you don't have what you need in that, you know, what I call the convenience aisle of the produce section, check out the frozen aisle. You can't use frozen vegetables for everything, but for soups, stews, stir fries, absolutely you can. So go ahead and take help from the grocery store and buy the pre-chopped stuff. Okay. Now if it's on the dirty dozen list and they don't have pre-chopped organic, then you're going to want to buy the whole, you know, fruit or vegetable, but don't be ashamed of buying a container of pre-diced onion. As long as they don't look all soggy and gross and smell weird, they work just exactly the same. A bag of frozen pre-diced onions works exactly the same. You're not gonna wanna thaw those and put them on top of a taco, but if you're using it as a base for a soup or stew or sauce or whatever, it's absolutely 100% the same thing. All right, number three, learn proper knife skills. This is going to cut your prep time in half. If you are going to use fresh, like say you have a garden or you have a CSA and you don't 
have the pre-chopped option or, you know, they didn't have enough pre-chopped stuff at the grocery store. Knowing how to properly chop your vegetables quickly and efficiently and beautifully is going to make your life so much easier. I know because I see it in my clients whenever I teach knife skills, they light up like a Christmas tree because they are so excited to see the knife do the work for them and how efficient they can be and how quickly they can chop and how beautiful their food looks. Highly, highly recommend. You can take them online. You can take them from Sur La Table, um, your local cooking school. Um, what else? Um, William Sonoma probably does them. So go ahead and check that out. That's going to make that's going to make a huge difference in your in your life. And number four, meal prep. You can write your your you can cook once and eat for days. So on your day off, whatever day it is or any day that you feel like you have extra energy or um, maybe your kid's out for a play date or a weekend at the grandparents, whatever it is, go ahead and print out, you know, three to four recipes, order all the groceries for them, um, gather everything and literally just stand there and cook all three to four recipes and stock your fridge with meals to eat for the week. It is going to save you so much time and energy, and it's a, it's a lot of work up front, but you go ahead and just load the whole dishwasher, <laughs> run it overnight, and then the next three days, you have food to pull out and either pop in the oven and reheat or microwave, however you want to do it, and if it's like you and your family um, have different meal times, like me and my husband work different hours, so he takes um, you know, food to work, or maybe he eats when he gets home from work, whatever it is, you can also um, pre-portion things in the little individual size Pyrex glass dishes, pop that in the oven, pop that in the microwave, however you like to reheat. It is going to make your life so much easier. And then last but not least, the fifth and final way that you can save time and energy at home cooking so that you can actually use food as medicine long enough to notice the difference is follow a meal plan. Again, you can write your own. Um, I have tips for how to write a meal plan on my blog. I'll go ahead and link that in the show notes. Um, <clears throat> you can, you know, buy a meal plan from somebody. You can download one from Pinterest. I don't know. There's lots of ways to get this, but, um, you know, having recipes written for you with the shopping list written for you and the whole plan there, it's like, you don't have to think about what am I going to make for dinner? You don't have to think about, okay, now I got to write a grocery list. Now I got to print out these recipes. I got to make these recipes fit my dietary needs. Like having it all done for you, all you have to do is order your groceries and then cook. It is such a lifesaver. It is such a time saver. And it actually, it gives you the energy to like, maybe try something new, you know, it gives you the energy to maybe prep in advance. You're going to find when you start incorporating these five tips, you're going to have extra energy around cooking. And it's not going to be this giant, daunting, overwhelming task that maybe you can't even bring yourself to do. Right. So I hope that these five tips help you. I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick recap um, just so that you can remember. Number one, order your groceries. Number two, buy pre-chopped vegetables. Take that help from the grocery store. There's no shame in that. Learn proper knife skills, meal prep, and then follow a meal plan. If you need help executing all of these tips and more, check out the Flare Free Cooking Academy. Enrollment for the month of January closes tonight at um, midnight, tonight, January 6th. And memberships include monthly anti-inflammatory meal plans complete with shopping lists and prep lists that will teach you how to cook once and eat for days live cooking instruction, and this month's cooking class is Knife Skills, um, group and private coaching for folks that need a little bit more one-on-one -on -one tailored help, community support, healing resources, and so much more. To learn more, head to my website, chefflorarodriguez.com, and message me on Instagram with any questions that you have. I really look forward to hearing from you, and I can't wait to see how these five tips help you take the burden out of cooking at home three times a day for at least three months or more so that you can notice a difference in your health. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for another episode of Edible Rx. I look forward to sitting down with you again soon. In the meantime, eat your damn vegetables. Bye.